Hey friends, I'm super excited to finally be ready to share my 2021 garden plan with you. Version one, I should say. <laughs> so I spent finally, I've been keeping like ideas in my phone, like what I wanna grow. Um, I think I've already drawn this once before back when I ordered seeds just to know what I wanna do. But today I'm like, I really got to get my act together and know if I can do what I want to do. So I want to share with you guys. First, if you're new here, welcome. You're at that 1870s homestead. We've been gardening on our land now for this will be the fourth season. So 2017 was our first season and we do raised bed gardening. We've done Ruth Stout in the past. We do um, definitely no-till, no, -till, no uh, slight no-dig. I mean, we do um, Broad Fork, the garden, every year. Um, but deep litter from the goats and the chickens, deep mulch, all kinds of experiments. Just seeing what really works, what gives us that highest yield. Um, and so far, at least the last two years here on the property, I've had extremely productive gardens. So I want to share my plan with you, especially if you only have a very small footprint that you're gardening. We have seven acres here, but my garden is only a 40 by 40 garden footprint, 40 foot by 40 foot. And so in that space, I'm able to grow enough food that it's more than enough vegetables, soups, sauce-based type ingredients, relishes, and things like that for Todd and I, and plenty, I mean plenty to give away the family and friends. Um, a lot of that is preserved either via canning or freezing. Um, we do do some dehydrating, but I don't really have to supplement produce very much here on the property, other than like seasonal fruits and things like that. So I drafted it up this morning and maybe throughout this video, if Todd gets clever and is editing, he can like show you clips from the garden last year to kind of give you an idea of the space that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna draw it out. Let's come down here. I have. Um, four in-ground beds that surround the garden. So I'm going to draw those out first. And I have um, eight raised beds. So let me just get my, my borders going. Guys, I am not a straight line drawer, so <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to go. But it's fun because I'll take this with me, um, you know, as I go out to get my initial plantings done and just to remind myself, what did I say I was going to do again? <laughs> All right, so that's kind of the space that I'm working with with respect to border, what I call earth beds. They are and the, you know, just built on top of the soil, no raised beds. And so far in this space here, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I do have a camera overhead, so hopefully this is capturing this. So far over here, I've planted garlic. I planted that um, last fall. So now let's draw out the raised bed spaces that I've got. And I have about two feet, let's see, in between each raised bed. I might be able to get it like that. So. This isn't gonna be perfect. My raised beds are four foot by eight foot. So it's not gonna be exactly to scale, but, and I have, um, I'm not sure if I said this already, I have, two foot uh, pathway in between each bed. 
All right, so this is my garden. Um, kind of have a gate here, little chairs here for sitting. <clears throat> now, let's start with what's the plan for the in-ground raised beds. So this is going to be all carrots. And we're going to do a row of beets down the center. And this is going to be all onions. And this is about a six foot wide space right here. Sorry. So I'm gonna do about two foot of uh, carrots, have a little walk path, probably 18 inches or so of beets, and another two foot wide row of onions. Okay, makes sense? Those are all great companion plants in here. You know, we probably will throw in some marigolds and things like that amongst it, um, but that is that. Now let's come down in this wall, just so you know, this is east. I should draw this east. This is north, west, south. So the sun rises and sets that direction. I realize I'm not looking at you guys at all. <laughs> Sorry. So um, let me think about this real quick. So this is probably a 16 foot row. Mm, what did I write? No, about a 20 foot row. 20 feet into from here to here. So Carrots, you could do about 16 carrots per square foot. Oh, I should have brought a calculator. Anyway, 16 times two times 20. That's how many carrots is gonna fit in that space. So you can really, really get a lot out of a very small footprint. So if you think six foot by 20 foot, beets, onions, I'm gonna space my onions probably around five inches it's somewhere in between four to six inches apart. Um, they will be high intensely planting my beets, about eight beets per square foot. So you can get a lot in there. Now potatoes. Potatoes are gonna go, and this is regular Kennebec or Russet, you know, whatever um, I end up going with. Right now I've got kind of just a few seed Kennebec potatoes in the basement. So we're gonna do potatoes along this back wall. And those are gonna, I'm gonna go back to roof stout guys this year. Those are gonna be planted roof stout. Um, I really missed that last year, having to dig in the dirt and harvest potatoes, not my thing. Roof stout, I love it. That's what I'm gonna go back to. It was worth the experiment. See what I learned from in ground potato growing, didn't enjoy it. So we're gonna do potatoes there. And then in the front here, I'm gonna do zucchini. Um, I would say uh, probably four zucchini plants spaced apart. And between those zucchini plants, um, I'm probably just gonna do some flowers, maybe some herbs, uh, but probably nasturtiums something pretty, because those zucchinis will get big and take up a lot of space. Moving on, let's go ahead and wrap up these corners. These corners are gonna be really pretty sunflower corners. I brought some fun cutting sunflowers from Haas Tools. So those are gonna be kind of like a V shape in both of those corners, just kind of tallest to smallest, like putting some cute teddy bear dwarfs in the front. So those two corners are gonna be sunflowers. Now, I mentioned how many peas you have to grow to get a big pea harvest. I should have said this at the beginning. Last year I told you guys, I'm gonna get a new garden fencing system eventually 
and I'll be able to use my fence for trellising. With the price of lumber right now, I don't know if that's going to happen this year. So my desire would be to trellis peas all the way around my garden and use that fence. Um, but I don't think that that's going to happen this year. So we're going to run a trellis along this whole back wall. And that would give me about 30 foot back here of growing space because this goes the entire way. And that is going to, um, you know, I won't go all the way into the sunflowers. And this is going to be peas. And just to let you know what kind I bought, I bought from Haas Tool a bag of um, Mr. Big Pea. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna grow back there. And then the front of the peas, I'm gonna grow, this is gonna be in my sweet potato bed. Again, we will do roost out here as well. So we'll have a whole big, huge, beautiful mound of sweet potatoes. Really excited for that. Now, I have mastered how many tomato plants I have to grow to get the harvest that I need for salsas, for spaghetti sauce, for tomato juice, for my Mexican's tomato sauce. I mean, and basically anything I need tomatoes for. And I know for me, that's around 30 to 32. So um, we really learned a lot last year watching um, Art and Brie and how they grew their tomatoes. So we're gonna do the same thing this year. Nothing different other than the style of trellising. Um, I continue to battle when I use either tree stakes, I often don't have enough T-post, or the tomato plants get too tall for my T-post. So we're gonna do kind of the string on a bamboo trellis style of Trellising our tomatoes. So let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I can fit about 22 tomato plants down this row. Now outside of those 22 tomato plants, this row is going to have two tomato plants on the end. And um, garlic enjoy can be planted well with tomatoes so that's 22 24 i need to fit six tomato plants in this spot so we're just going to put tentatively i don't know exactly how i'll lay them out but i'll get 10 or six more tomato plants in that back square with those garlics okay now the fun things all my raised beds. We're gonna start with the hardest one at first, but it's something that I'm excited to share with you guys this year. These two beds currently are strawberry beds and they've been strawberry beds since day one and they have done really well, but they are going on their fourth year. And if you grow strawberries, you know that that's kind of when they start losing their, you know, big maturation space and you should probably pull them out and replant new. So we're gonna do that this year. But I'm gonna actually, what I'm gonna do is probably, I would guess like early April, late March, early April, I'm gonna go out there and harvest a bunch of the young strawberry plants, those that established themselves last year as runners off the mother plants. And we're going to actually use one of our green stock grow towers for our strawberry tower this year. Um, whether or not I leave it out in the garden or bring it up here towards the house, I haven't decided yet. But now I get two more garden beds out of there. And honestly, it threw me for a curve this year because I've grown the same Staples garden for the last probably two solid years. And I had now this new space. I'm like, what do I put there? <laughs> I don't know what to put. Um, and I also want to probably try a new method of gardening, something I've never done before. And I don't know what I'm gonna choose. So I'm looking for advice, comments, things that you guys would like to see me try. Things I'm thinking of are a true Hugo culture style 
raised bed. So really dig a deep trench, bury a lot of woody um, brown green material, put it in there, refill it and continue to do that till we have a big mound. That's where I'm thinking about going. Um, but we may just stick with, maybe you guys wanna see how do you just build a raised bed from scratch? We've never shown that before because we did that before we ever had our YouTube channel. So I could definitely do one or the other, but maybe there's another method you guys would like to see. Core gardening, I've never done core gardening before in the traditional sense. So all kinds of options. Anyway, these are gonna come out New raised beds of some kind are gonna go in. And we are going to do, and this is, this is when I say my garden plan version one, these two beds I haven't 100% settled on. But I know I need to plant cucumbers. I don't know exactly where and how and what method, but cucumbers and I don't have a space for pumpkins yet. So I kind of just put a generic placeholder right here for cucumbers and pumpkins. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna continue to move on towards the um, north wall. And we're gonna have peppers. Sorry about that, battery had to be changed out. Um, so what I, I was saying, I'm planting peppers in these two beds. And the fun thing that I love to do is create big um, vertical trellising in my garden. So this trellis down the center of my garden space is going to be green beans. And I'm excited how that's gonna look. It's just gonna be right down the center. It's gonna be, they get so full and beautiful. And then we're gonna have salad mix on this side. I have, <clears throat> this is very tentative, some other type of green here. I don't know what exactly. Could be mustard, could be something else. And we're gonna have more peppers down this one. And then spinach. And more spinach. Spinach. Okay, the last one. Guys, I have something new coming this year that I bought and I, I bought it from Grower Solution and they are made exactly the size of my raised beds and it's a big tent for protecting my brassicas finally, properly with from um, both two, two things. It acts as a greenhouse when you need it to act as a greenhouse or you can take the greenhouse barrier off and it's just insect netting. So this is, a brassica row and we're gonna have cabbage cabbage and we're gonna have Brussels sprouts down the center and broccoli And then we're gonna put some dill in here. I tried growing dill up in my um, green stalks. They didn't seem to like it that much. So I'm gonna give them raised beds this year <clears throat> for my dill. And these will ha um, have the tents on them. So other than that, I always find spaces for more flowers in my garden to attract pollinators. We have bees on the property. so. They get drawn in here outside of everything else that's flowering. Um, but yeah, that's my garden plan this year. So if you're new to gardening this year, and I think there's quite a few of you that are thinking about what you're gonna do with respect to growing space, I personally have found so much benefit following high intensity planting guides. You can certainly get so much more out of your space when you follow it properly. Now, when you try to get even more and you get a little greedy, then you start getting um, some lower results. But following um, square foot gardening templates, things like that, you can find a lot of that information online. 
I'm gonna link down in the description below one of my favorite gardening tools, which is my square foot gardening template. And it kind of, you just put it in your garden and it tells you how many seeds and where to drop them so you get the right spacing. And then a book that is a great companion to that by Mel Bartholomew called um, The Square Foot Gardener's Growing Guide or something like that. To me, it's my gardening Bible. It's how I got started. And I don't refer to it too often now because I, I know it for the most part, but sometimes I'll pull it out if I'm growing something new for the first time. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This is gonna be a really good start. There is um, probably collards may go here. That's probably the only thing that I don't have a, a strong foothold on where things are going. And like I said, the pumpkins and cucumbers, those are just, uh, you know, my ideas right now. Um, I may throw in some more. But guys, this space will produce enough food easily for a family up to four, possibly five, if you're clever with how you extend um, your harvest and, you know, how you cook. But for us, I mean, we have carryover year to year from food that we've preserved. So it's more than enough for us. So thanks guys. I wish you all the luck in your garden planning. I'll also link in the description below is two of my favorite um, seed suppliers. That would be Haas Tools and, and My Gardener. Um, I'll also leave links to So True Seed and Johnny Seed Company, other two other companies that I've ordered from, but just on a limited um, supply. And Dixondale Farms, where you need to order your onion starts if you haven't already. Thanks guys, talk to you later.